Backtesting is essential for every trader. It helps us test strategies using historical data, showing whether they would have worked before risking real money. But just running a backtest isn't enough. We need detailed insights to understand our strategies, strengths, and weaknesses. In this video, we'll analyze key backtesting reports like profit and loss distribution and sell reasons to see how trades performed. Looking at these charts, we can spot patterns, whether losses are too frequent, if trailing stops are cutting profits too early, or if the strategy needs better risk management. By the end, you'll know exactly how to evaluate, refine, and optimize your strategy for better results. Let's dive in. Here, you can see that I've enabled the Bollinger Bands indicator on my TradingView chart. You can easily add this to your own chart by going to the Indicators section, searching for Bollinger Bands, and add it to your chart. Bollinger Bands are great for identifying market volatility and potential reversal points. The bands expand when volatility is high and contract when the market is calm. The price often moves between the upper and lower bands, making them useful for spotting overbought and oversold conditions. Strategies using this indicator seem promising, like buying when the price touches the lower band and selling at the upper band. But how do we know if that actually works? Can we check it? Yes, that's where backtesting comes in. Backtesting is the process of testing a strategy using historical data to see how it would have performed in the past. By applying our Bollinger Band strategy to previous price movements, we can analyze whether it would have been profitable or not. This helps us spot weaknesses before using it in live trading. Before diving in, let's see what we're gonna do. In this video, I wanna show you how Bollinger Band strategies work using backtesting. This means we'll test different types of strategies on historical data from 2024 to see how they would have performed. After that, we'll take things a step further by learning how to automate these strategies. But before trading with real money, we need to forward test them. Forward testing, also known as paper trading, is like a trial run for a strategy using real-time market conditions, but without risking actual money. Instead, we use virtual funds to see how the strategy performs in a live environment. This helps us check if the strategy holds up outside of historical data before committing real capital. And finally, I'll show you how to trade automatically using this indicator with real funds. The best part? You don't need any coding skills for any of this. So let's get started. For the first strategy, we'll keep it simple. We want to see what would have happened if we opened a position every time the price crossed below the lower band and sold when it crossed above the upper band in 2024 on a one hour time frame. To test this, we'll use CryptoTailor.io, a platform that makes backtesting easy. It lets us run our strategy on historical data and provides detailed reports, including win rate, profit percentage, and more. First, we need to select our trading pair. For this example, We'll test this strategy on Bitcoin. Next, we choose the time period for the backtest. I've already selected the entire year of 2024 to get a full year performance overview. Here, we can also set our initial capital and trading fee rate. To ensure accurate results, it's important to account for trading fees charged by exchanges. Most exchanges typically charge a 0.1% fee per trade, so I'll leave this setting as it is. This way, our backtest will include trading fees, giving us a more realistic view of the strategy's performance. Then, we need to select our buy and sell strategy. For the buy strategy, as we discussed, we'll set it to buy when the price crosses below the lower Bollinger Band on a one hour time frame. For the sell strategy, we'll set it to sell when the price crosses above the upper Bollinger Band on the same one hour time frame. While we can test strategies across different timeframes, to keep things simple for this video, we'll stick to the one hour timeframe. Next comes one of the most important parts, choosing our stop loss and take profit levels. To manage risk and lock in profits, we'll set both stop loss and take profit at 3%. This means that if the price moves against our position by 3%, we'll exit to limit losses. On the other hand, if the price rises by 3%, we'll take profits automatically. Now that everything is set, let's run the back test and see how this strategy performs. As you can see from the page color, and although the strategy looked promising on the chart, 
it turned out to be unprofitable. This strategy had a 57% win rate, but ended with a minus 19% profit. On the right, you can see the equity curve, which represents how our balance changed over time throughout the backtest. This curve helps us visualize the strategy's performance. It starts with our initial capital and moves up or down based on our trades. When the strategy makes profitable trades, the curve rises. When trades result in losses, the curve declines. Looking at this chart, we can see that the strategy had some good periods where the balance increased, but overall it trended downward, meaning it wasn't consistently profitable. During the backtest, it detected 271 buy signals, but 121 of them were ignored. The reason for this is that CryptoTailor.io simulates real-world trading conditions, meaning that when a position is already open, it won't open a new one until the previous position is closed. Because of this, 121 potential entry points were ignored since the previous trade was still active. In total, 150 positions were opened in 2024, resulting in 86 wins and 64 losses, averaging one position every two days. The back test started with an initial balance of $10,000 and ended with $8,078, resulting in a minus 19% total loss and an absolute loss of $1,921. Even though the strategy had a 57% win rate, it was still unprofitable, likely because losses were larger than wins. The average position duration was around 20 hours, meaning most trades lasted less than a day. Also, this backtest shows a max drawdown of 31%, which means that at some point during the test, our account balance dropped 31% from its highest value before recovering. Max drawdown is an important risk metric because it shows the worst case scenario for our strategy. A high drawdown means that even if the strategy eventually recovers, it goes through large losses along the way, which can be difficult to handle in real trading. In this case, a 31% drawdown is quite high, meaning the strategy experienced significant losses at some point. This suggests that we might need to adjust our risk management, possibly by refining our stop loss, take profit, or adding more filters to avoid bad trades. From the View Positions section, you can also check the detailed logs of the backtest. This shows the exact times of when each position was opened and closed, along with the entry and exit prices. Now, let's take a look at some other key performance metrics from the backtest. The largest win in a single trade was 2.8%, while the largest loss was minus 3.2%. This shows that the strategy did have some profitable trades, but also experienced significant losses. On average, winning trades made 1.83%, whereas losing trades lost minus 2.73%. Since the average loss is bigger than the average win, this explains why the overall strategy ended up being unprofitable. We also see that the longest win streak was 14 trades in a row, meaning the strategy had some strong periods. However, the maximum loss streak was four trades in a row, showing that it also had rough patches. Next, let's take a look at the profit loss distribution chart. This shows how our trades were distributed in terms of percentage gains and losses. The red bars represent losing trades, while the green bars show winning trades. The largest portion of trades fell in the minus 2.5% to minus 3% range, which explains why the strategy ND ended up being unprofitable a significant percentage of trades resulted in losses close to our stop loss level. On the winning side, we see that a good number of trades landed between 2.5% and 3%, which was our take profit target. However, there weren't enough of these winning trades to compensate for the frequent losses. And finally, let's take a look at the sell reason distribution chart, which shows why each trade was closed. From the data, we can see that around 17% of trades hit the take profit level, while 35% of trades hit the stop loss. Additionally, 40% of trades were closed by the sell strategy when the price crossed above the upper Bollinger Band, resulting in a profit, while 7.3% were closed by the sell strategy in a loss. Overall, this chart gives us a clear picture of how trades were exited. Since stop losses were triggered more often than take profits, and the losses were generally larger than the wins, the strategy ended up being unprofitable in the long run. This is exactly why backtesting is so important. It helps us identify a strategy's weaknesses before risking real money. 
Now that we've analyzed the results, let's explore ways to improve the strategy. First, we need to adjust our stop loss level. In our back test, about 35% of trades were stopped out, which suggests that our stop loss might have been too tight. In the highly volatile crypto market, price swings can often trigger stop losses before reversing in our favor, leading to unnecessary losses. By giving the stop loss more room, we can reduce the chances of getting stopped out too early. However, we still need to maintain proper risk management. If the stop loss is too wide, we risk losing more on bad trades. To find a better balance, let's increase both the take profit and stop loss to 5%. Then, for our buy condition, instead of buying when the price crosses below the lower band, let's change it to when the price crosses above the lower band. This means we'll enter a trade after the price moves back inside the Bollinger Bands, rather than catching it while it's still dropping. The idea behind this adjustment is to avoid buying during strong downtrends and instead enter when the price shows signs of recovery. To improve momentum confirmation, we'll also use the RSI indicator by checking if the RSI has been increasing over the last three candles on a lower time frame. This helps in two ways. First, RSI measures strength and momentum, so if it's rising, it indicates that buyers are stepping in and the price could continue upward. Second, using a lower time frame like 30 minutes allows us to spot momentum shifts earlier, giving us a better entry signal instead of just relying on Bollinger Bands alone. By combining these conditions, we aim to filter out weak buy signals and enter only when the price shows signs of recovery with increasing momentum. Let's rerun our backtest and see how our new backtest works. As you can see, there is a huge improvement in performance. Our win rate increased from 57% to 75%, meaning a much higher percentage of trades ended in profit. The total profit jumped from minus 19% to 52%, showing that the new strategy is not only more consistent, but also profitable. We also see a significant drop in max drawdown, going from 31% down to just 14% which means the strategy experienced much smaller losses along the way. Additionally, our absolute profit improved from a 1921 USDT loss to a 5200 USDT gain, proving that the adjustments worked well. Now that we've optimized the strategy, you can backtest your own favorite settings and fine-tune them even further. But now comes the exciting part. Let's take this strategy to the next level by automating it in demo mode with virtual funds. Using this section, we can easily automate our strategy in demo mode to test how it performs in real time without risking real money. This process turns our strategy into an automated trading bot, executing trades based on our predefined rules, all without any coding. First, we choose a name for our strategy and click Save. This allows us to track and manage our strategy easily. Next, we need to select the exchange and trading pair for the simulation. For this example, we'll go with Binance and Bitcoin, so the system will execute trades based on real-time Bitcoin price movements. Next, we need to decide how much to invest per trade, either a fixed amount or a percentage of our balance. If we choose static amount, the bot will open positions with the same fixed value every time, regardless of our account balance, like 100 USDT. If we select dynamic, the bot will adjust the trade size based on our balance on the exchange. For example, if we set it to 10% and have $1,000 in our exchange spot balance, the bot will open trades with $100. If our balance grows to 2,000, the bot will automatically increase trade size to 200, allowing for compounding growth. For demo trading, the bot always uses a fixed 100 USDT for simulations, but in live trading, this setting helps scale our strategy over time. In the final step, we can pick a name for our trading bot and make sure it's set to run in demo mode. Later, I'll explain how you can switch it to live mode so the bot can trade using real money in your exchange account. We also need to set the bot to be active upon creation, meaning it will start trading as soon as we finish setting it up. In the auto reactivation section, we decide how the bot should restart after closing a position. By default, the bot disables itself once a position is opened, waiting until the previous trade is closed before taking a new one. Here, we can choose whether the bot should reactivate automatically based on the outcome of the last trade. 
For demo mode and testing this strategy, I'll set the bot to reactivate after the previous position is closed, regardless of whether it was a win or a loss. This way, we can see how it performs continuously over multiple trades. You can also enable Telegram notifications, so every time the bot opens a position, you'll receive a message. It will also notify you when a position is closed, including the trade results. To use this feature, you first need to connect your account to Telegram. Once connected, you'll get real-time updates on your bot's activity, keeping you informed without needing to check the platform constantly. And finally, by clicking Save, our bot is ready and running in demo mode. Here, you can see the Open Positions Conditions section. A new position will be opened automatically whenever all the conditions are met simultaneously. In this section, you can also monitor the current values of the selected indicators. For example, you can see the Bollinger Bands price position for both the current open candle and the latest closed candle. It's important to note that a condition is only considered true when it happens in the latest closed candle. This means that if the price crosses above the lower Bollinger Band, it must do so in a fully closed candle for the bot to take action. This approach ensures accuracy and avoids issues caused by real-time price fluctuations, also known as false signals. And here, you can also see the close position conditions, along with the take profit and stop loss levels we configured earlier. Now, this bot is running 24-7 in the background, automating trades based on your strategy using virtual funds. It continuously monitors the market, opening and closing positions whenever the conditions are met, just like it would in live trading. After a while, let's say a couple of months, you can check the closed positions menu to get detailed reports on how the bot has performed. These reports allow you to review your bot's performance over time, including the total number of trades, wins and losses, win rate, and profit and loss. Also, in the reports section, under the daily PNL menu, you can track your bot's profit and loss on a daily basis. Green bars represent profitable days, while red bars indicate losing days, giving you a clear view of your strategy's performance over time. Now for the final part. Let's see how to connect this bot to an exchange and automate trades using real funds. After running the bot in demo mode for a while, once you're confident in your strategy, you can connect it to your exchange through the Exchanges menu. This connection is done using API keys, which are a secure way provided by all reputable exchanges. These keys allow the bot to execute trades on your behalf without access to withdrawals or security-sensitive actions. Each exchange has a step-by-step -step guide on how to create and use these API keys, making the setup process easy. Once your exchange is connected, all you need to do is switch the bot from demo mode to live mode, and it will start trading with real funds automatically based on your strategy. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to open a support ticket or leave a comment below, and we'll be happy to help. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more trading bot tutorials, strategy guides, and automation tips. See you in the next video.